everybody. So as promised, I'm showing off my newest homemade courses. So here it is. And I will be posting another video later on showing you the details of this corset. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a floating modesty panel just like this one to match the rest of your corset. Now there are lots of different types of modesty panels. Some of them have plastic bones or metal bones in it. Some of them may be suspended like this, either with grommets or by ribbon. And some of them might be attached, sewn onto one side. So in the future, if anybody is interested, I'll show you how to do all these different types. So you can see here that I made it to be a 21 inch corset. I'll actually be wearing it at 23 inches with a two inch gap in the back. And after I seasoned it, you can see that uh, it stretched about a quarter inch. So that is acceptable. My natural waist is 28 inches, but I'm going to be wearing the corset at some sort of reduction. So I think I'm going to make a six inch wide modesty panel. So from 21 to 27. The length of the modesty panel is going to be exactly the length of the back of the corset, which you can see is 13 inches. But this is what I'm going to be putting inside my modesty panel just to keep it flat. It's a piece of plastic that has a whole bunch of holes in here as you can see and it is the perfect length it's 13 inches um, by 10 and a half inches so I can just cut it to size and this was only I think 50 cents at the dollar store so you can pick up a whole bunch of them since a modesty panel isn't going to be taking any stress from the corset, I don't have to use coutil for it. So I'm just using the same material that I used for the lining inside of the corset. This is a bright pink cotton twill. And I'm going to cut out two pieces, um, the length and the width of the modesty panel that I want, plus one inch for both the length and the width, so that I'll have half an inch for a seam allowance on every end. This gauzy looking material is a sheet of glue in web form. I'm cutting out one layer to fuse one of the twill panels to the brocade. And here is the silky pink cherry blossom brocade, which I'm also cutting out one panel from. When you're going to fuse this, put the brocade at the bottom and the, put the layer of glue on top of that on the wrong side of the brocade and then put the twill on top of that. Then press it like this with the iron on the twill at the top. This way the brocade won't scorch since it's on the bottom, but the glue will become hot enough to melt and fuse the two layers together. Once everything is fused, then place your brocade twill fused panel on top of the other panel, right sides together, and then pin it on three sides leaving the last side open. Then stitch where you pinned, again leaving the fourth side open. When you get to a corner, leave the needle down, lift the foot up, and swivel the panel 90 degrees to start stitching the next side. Here I'm stitching a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You'll see why in a minute. After stitching the three sides, flip the panel like a pillowcase so it's right side out. Use something pointy to poke the corners out. Press this panel to make the seams really crisp. Now I'm going back over the panel right side out and top stitching 1 8 of an inch away from the edge. Now you can see that the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and the 1 8 of an inch top stitch makes a total allowance of half an inch on each side. You don't have to top stitch but I think it looks neater this way and it will look congruent to the last side when you do eventually stitch that side together. So now I'm cutting the plastic sheet to size, 12 inches by 6 inches. You may find it easier to get the sheet into the panel if you round the corners of that plastic sheet slightly. Once the sheet is in, tuck the edges of the fourth side under and pin it. Stitch 1 8 of an inch away from the edge, making the stitching look like it's even all the way around the panel. So here is the modesty panel, and you can see that it's actually rather stiff. Width-wise and length-wise, it has some rigidity, but it is also flexible, so it can actually bend to the contours of your back. So it's not going to be perfectly flat and give you a backache. So now all we need to do is attach it to the corset. You can either 
stitch it by hand or by machine to one side of the corset or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some grommets through it to make it a floating modesty panel. Place the panel underneath the laces where you want it to rest and make sure it's centered. Locate two X's that are crossing on the underside, not the overside of the corset. One of those X's should be near the top of the corset and the other X near the bottom of the corset. Mark with chalk the placement of those two under X's on your panel. I'm going to mark four spots under each X to make grommets. If you find afterward that your marks are uneven, then go back and even out the marks. Since the laces are flexible, then the difference of the placement of the grommets by just a few millimeters won't make too much of a difference. Once you're done inserting the grommets, it's time to unthread the corset up to that first under X where your panel is going to be. When creating your new under X, thread it through the grommets of the panel, making sure the majority of the panel remains underneath the laces. Remember, you always want the panel between your body and the laces, so as you continue to thread your corset, the laces should always remain above the modesty panel. When you get to the bottom set of grommets on the panel, once again, thread the laces of the under X through. If you made your marks correctly, everything should match up. Once you're finished, tie the ends of the laces into a knot. And this is how the modesty panel should look when it's finished. Look how it floats in the center of the laces, and because the grommets in the panel hug across in each of the two X's of the laces, it will always remain centered as you tighten your corset. The sheet inside the panels is flat enough to comfortably slide between your back and the corset. It's flexible enough to bend with the natural curve of your back and it won't dig into the top of your bum. And it's just rigid enough to prevent the panel from wrinkling up and it protects your skin from friction burn from the laces. And this is what the back of the corset looks like when it's suitably tightened. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful and informative for you. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!